everyone, this is Kenji Lopez Alt for Serious Seats and the Food Lab, and today we are talking about one of my favorite roasts, the prime rib. It's beefy, it's juicy, it's succulent, it's gorgeous, it's badass, it's festive, it's impressive, it's decadent, it's meaty, it's the ultimate holiday roast, it's just so good. But it's also expensive, and if you're gonna be dropping a hundred bucks or more on a nice piece of beef like this, you wanna make sure that you're going to cook it right. So what's the best way to cook prime rib? Well today I'm going to show you a technique that's going to completely change the way you think about roast beef. It's called the reverse sear and it turns some bits of conventional cooking wisdom on its head. But the good news is it's really simple, it's completely foolproof, and I promise you it is going to deliver the best roast beef you have ever had in your life. I promise you that. Here's how you do it. First and foremost, the most important thing you're looking for when you buy a piece of meat is the marbling. And that is this intramuscular fat right here. Most of the flavor in beef actually comes from the fat, and so that's what's going to make this prime rib both flavorful and moist. Now you could ask your butcher to French the bones for you, but I prefer to leave the fat on, trimming it down to just about half an inch or so for more flavor. Now what about the bones? Well, a lot of people say that cooking the meat with the bones in actually adds flavor to it. This is not exactly true. There's not really an active exchange of flavor going on between the bones and the meat. But there are actually a couple of good reasons to buy meat with the bone in. First of all, it just looks cool. Secondly, bones act as an insulator, which means that all this meat around the bones is going to end up more evenly cooked. Finally, when you're done eating your main portion of prime rib, all that meat, all that connective tissue, all that fat that's clinging to the bones, that's the tastiest bit on the prime rib. So I always like to include bones with my prime rib. If you can, ask your butcher for a piece of prime rib from the chuck end. That's the end that's gonna have a lot more sort of variance in the musculature. So you have the small eye of meat, that's the longissimus dorsi. It's nice and tender, not very flavorful though. Around that, you have surrounding it the spinalis dorsi, and that is the most flavorful part of the prime rib. You're gonna want about one pound of bone-in prime rib per person, which works out to about two to three servings per bone. Prime rib has got plenty of flavor on its own, so it doesn't really need much more than some salt and pepper. Season your beef heavily with salt and pepper at least the day before and up to four days ahead of roasting. You can let it sit on a rack in your refrigerator uncovered. This is gonna allow time for the salt to penetrate and season more deeply, and it's also gonna dry out the surface, which is going to lead to better browning down the line during roasting. Now, traditionally, prime rib is cooked by starting it in a very hot oven to sear the exterior and then lowering the temperature to gently cook it through to the inside. This is what happens when you cook beef like that. So because the heat is penetrating the meat slowly and the air temperature in the oven is so hot, you end up actually overcooking the outer layers of meat before the center is done. For me, this is not ideal. I want to have as much medium rare meat as possible. Well, that's where the reverse sear comes in and it flips traditional cooking methods on their head. Instead of starting in a hot oven and switching to cool, you start in a cool oven, about 250 degrees or even cooler if your oven can maintain it. At this range, the roast is gonna cook really slowly, about three and a half to six and a half hours, depending on what you set your oven temperature to initially. It takes some planning, but it leads to incredibly evenly cooked meat with a nice medium rare pinkness extending from edge to edge. I like my beef to be cooked to a medium rare 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to soften the fat a bit, but cool enough to help it retain juices. However you like your beef done, make sure to use a thermometer to check it. Now the only problem with low temperature roasting is that beef doesn't develop much color at those low temperatures. And no color means no flavor, so you really have to go back and add that in afterwards. After its initial cook, you can let that beef now rest at room temperature covered in foil for anywhere from half an hour to an hour and a half. And as soon as you're ready to eat, that is when you want to set your oven temperature up to as high as it possibly goes to give it that sear. The good news is that because of the long, slow cook and overnight rest, the exterior of this roast is actually quite dry and is probably coated in a thin layer of rendered beef fat. These are ideal conditions for good brown. Once the oven is preheated, add the beef and let it cook for just 10 or 15 minutes until it's nice and crisp and browned on the outside. The really neat thing about this method is that it actually produces a roast that is measurably juicier than the traditional method. After the beef comes out of the oven, it can go straight onto a carving board. Now to carve a prime rib, start by removing the bones by using a carving knife like this to trace down the contour. It should be really easy. From there, you can simply cut the beef into slices. I like to go about half inch thick per slice. Check it out, almost all of the meat is perfectly medium rare. 
This beef is so tasty that you don't even really need a sauce, but of course, if you want something like a red wine jus or a horseradish cream, you can find those recipes on SeriousEats.com. This is Kenji Lopez-Alt wishing you all happy holidays and happy reverse searing. Oh, 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 oh,